This video will show how to set up and record a run for a multi-run database. The first thing you want to do is go into setup and here we select which database we want to be in. There are 10 databases in the unit. They're predefined names of database 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're going to start out using database 1 so we hit yes to select it. We want to continue to set up so we select yes. Here you can clear all runs if you wanted to delete all your runs but in this case there aren't any in here yet so we'll just hit no. You have an option to change the name of the database. You can name it appropriately for the person's car or the track that you want to uh, save it as. It's up to you. For right now we're just going to leave it called database 1. Here you can decide whether you want to do an ET prediction or a throttle stop prediction. We'll start out by just doing an ET prediction. You have two choices to predict with. You can use a multiple run which allows you to enter runs into the database and then use those runs to generate your prediction. You can also do what's called a one run prediction. The one run prediction which will be shown in another video allows you to select one base run and some uh, preset parameters to generate your prediction. For right now we're going to predict with uh, multiple runs, so we're going to select one. Here you can choose which method of, uh, of error you can predict off of. The standard is density altitude and that's what we're going to choose now. You can also correct your prediction for wind effect, whether it be using a built-in wind sensor in one of our units or a handheld wind sensor, that's up to you. For right now, for simplicity, we're going to uh, not choose to predict with wind. So now we've set up our database for multi-run prediction, database number one for ET mode. So the scenario would be that you press sample error when you're, let's say, getting ready to make a run, and the unit's going to go ahead and uh, take an error reading for you. Now at this point in time, you can let the uh, box shut off by itself or manually turn it off, and that last error sample is going to be saved in there indefinitely until you record or sample the error again. Uh, that'll be called your current weather sample. So now the scenario is you get back to your trailer, let's say after you make a run, we've saved this air sample when we were up uh, at the starting line, and now we want to go ahead and enter this data into our database. So what we do from the main menu is simply press 3 for run entry menu, 2 to add run, and then again we want to use that current air sample that we took at the starting line, so we hit 1 for current. That's automatically going to drop our DA number into there automatically. It'll also automatically save all the temperature, humidity, and pressure data uh, along with it. So now this, it's prompting us for our 1,000-foot uh, ET. If we were doing 8th mile, we might enter a 330-foot time ET. Um, quarter mile, we're going to put in 1,000-foot. This uh, time is used only for doing what's called run completion. So if you hit the brakes on a run, or a let off, you can hit the run completion mode and it'll uh, determine what you would have ran based on your 1,000 foot. Uh, so right now we're just going to, let's say we're going to key in a 1,000 foot time of uh, 8.25. We're going to hit, and you can go all the way down to the thousandth uh, decimal place. So you go ahead and enter that in. Now we're going to enter in our uh, final ET we had for that run. Well, let's say we ran a 9.982. Now that run should be stored in our database. So what we can do again is go into the run entry menu. We can this time, it shows us that we have one run stored. We can opt to view this run and use the scroll key to see the run that we've entered. Pressing the enter button while viewing the run allows us to see all the particular data for that run. So now at this point in time, we have one run entered into the box. Uh, for ET mode, mathematically we need two runs to be stored in order to generate a prediction. Realistically, you want about five or six runs. You want those runs to spread about a thousand foot of density altitude in order to give the computer some good data to predict your car with. Okay, so now we're going to enter a second run into the database. This time we're going to hit add run, but instead of hitting current we're just going to hit manual because we want to just uh, 
enter in some realistic data here. So let's say this run was at 3,500 feet, which is a couple hundred foot worse than our last run. And let's just say our uh, thousand foot was uh, 826. And our final ET was about a hundred slower than our previous run. 9.995. So now we have two realistic runs in the database. We hit sample error and we could see that for 2600 foot we get a 9.91 prediction which uh, is uh, reasonable.